Welcome to a video in which we're going to be upgrading my secondary setup. Now then, although it's not very tidy at the moment, I have a s another setup which is my main setup and has all my big displays on it. However, because of the COVID situation, um, my mother also needs somewhere to work. So it's quite lucky I just had I just got that uh, corner desk over there. So my desk that I used to use all the time has now been dedicated to a secondary setup. And I have so much surplus computing equipment that she also gets three monitors. And these aren't necessarily the best monitors I've got either. They're just the ones I had to hand and the ones that were the most useful and functional for the job. So for example, this one over here is only 1024 by 768 and is quite small. However, it has a USB hub. You can see a memory stick plugged in there. So I thought, well, I'll use that. This middle one is a TV, this is actually full HD. And this one on the right hand side is quite old at this point, but it's 1280 by 1024 and it's quite a nice picture. I got most of this for free. The middle TV we used to have in the kitchen and the left hand one used to be dad's back when that was a normal size for a display back before they got massive. And if you look down here, now unfortunately I don't have really anything to light this with, but this is the computer that she's been using. And this is my sort of secondary machine. On top here is the amplifier for the speakers. This is a Wharfdale system that has been in the family for pretty much as long as I've been alive. But more interestingly here is this computer. This used to be Ollie's computer. You'll get to see inside it in a minute, so I'll talk about the specifications then. But um, since Ollie has got a more powerful computer, I have repurposed this as my sort of test bench computer. So you can see, for example, I've got two optical drives, but I've also got here... I've got one of these quick release hard drive bays that you can put a three and a half inch hard drive in. This case though is very old and very busted. You can see the power button fell off so now you just have to hit this. Um, if we turn it around a bit, the side panel isn't actually held on at all with screws because the screws are completely stripped. So there's the inside of it, I'll show you this more clearly later. Um, so. Yeah, uh, that's a bit of a problem. This case in general is just really old, really bashed up. You know, this isn't straight anymore. I don't know what's happened there. Um, and I just I just want rid of it at this point. It looks ugly, you know, things like that. So, as ever, I went on eBay and I got this thing. This is um, a CIT Dark Soul black case. Um, it's supposed to be a gaming case, but... I think it looks quite nice. This is quite a well-equipped case. I've been very happy with CIT products in the past. I built Ollie's computer in one of these, not this exact case. It was an Elizarin, I think, or something like that. Um, but yeah, so you've got, it's probably not gonna be easy to see because this whole thing is black, but uh, you've got a dust filter here, which is really nice. You can put two fans in the top. I'm not going to be because of the way the cooling setup works in this computer. You've got a nice side panel here. I just realized there's a tiny, tiny bit of plastic stuck in there, oh well. Um, I've already been inside this, of course. It's got, comes with all the goodies. It even comes with a little piezo beeper thing that I might, uh, that I will hook up just because, why not? Um, USB 3 and 2 on the front. There's a single USB 3 port and two USB 2s. The, um, the motherboard that is in here does not support USB 3, but if I can do some digging, I will be able to find my USB 2 to USB 3 adapter so I can plug it into the motherboard anyway and have all these functional. And of course, you've got your HD audio. Now, one slight downside of this is that I'm losing three of my uh, five and a quarter inch bays. There's only one five and a quarter inch bay here, but that's not really a problem. What I'm going to do, no one uses optical drives anymore, so what I'm going to do is just take this quick release mechanism that I want to use out of there and put it in here. Um, I've got an external CD drive that works over USB if we really need that anyway. Uh, yeah, so the other thing that I bought, because right now this computer is operating off a 500 gig hard drive. It's running Windows 7. Yes, I know Windows 7 lost support. Um, this was all set up way before this became an actual computer that we were going to use and I just wanted to mess around with it, so I installed Windows 7 on it. But now that it's actually going to get some use, I bought one of these. It's obviously an SSD. This is an Intel, it's part of their Pro line. It's a 1500 drive. It's got 180 gigabyte capacity. Um, Intel always makes these really nice. They're made of metal. They're nice and they're not ridiculously feather weight. So you can tell there's some good stuff in here. And obviously it's a Pro series drive. So these are probably engineered for 
long lasting. This was the cheapest drive that was bigger than 120 gigs that was on eBay. Um, because I like to put more than 128 gigs in my system. So I went and sorted by price lowest first and I scrolled for quite a while and I found this thing. I believe this is used, but it looks brand new. So who knows? Regardless, it will probably outlast the rest of the computer because we'll get to that when I show you the insides of the other one. The other thing that I bought, which I haven't got yet, and I don't think this is a big deal, is I bought another fan. Now, this case comes with a fan. It's actually, because it's a gamer case, it comes with an LED fan. I don't know if you can see it in there. Um, but I'm going to be leaving that in there for now. Next time I go to Dad's, I'm going to take one of Ollie's non-light-up fans and put that, swap that with this one, because Ollie likes his bit of bling, so I can put the LED one in his computer. Um... But I've also got an order, an Arctic F14, which is a 140mm fan, and I'm probably going to put that either somewhere in the front, which I don't know how optimal that's going to be, because the only vents on the front are on the side there, you might be able to see. Um, but I'll try that. Or I could put it in the top, but then we're getting a bit of crisscross kind of airflow patterns that I don't really like. So I'll have to experiment with that, and actually I just realised it's not going to go in the top anyway, because this is only 120 mil space oh well that's not a big deal i'll put it in the front then <laughs> um yeah so let's get building let's disconnect this computer here and take it out of there and let's start swapping over the components all right so i've got this on the desk if we take the cover off here down there you can see um quite a lot of stuff so this is an old school am3 based system now that's about 10 years old at this point. Um, but this thing's actually doing quite well for itself. I've got 8 gigs of RAM in here. Uh, two 1 gig sticks, a 2 and a 4. That's not really optimal, but it works. Um, and this graphics card. Now, you may be able to notice that this is, uh, well, being experimented with. You see, the reason this electrical tape is here is because this graphics card, which is a Radeon HD 6870, so, you know, still a, a decently competent GPU. It can definitely run all these three monitors pretty well. Um, originally came in the Mac Pro over there, and you will see that in my Mac Pro video, which I will also link to in the description. However, when I took this out to give it to Ollie, because this was before Ollie got his new computer, I broke the cooler on it. The fan pretty much just fell apart in my hands. So... I had already got an HD 6870 and we'd accidentally blown it up because we used a power supply that was awful. But I thought, well, maybe the cooler is compatible. Um, that card was an MSI card, and I don't know if you can really see. If I kind of get the camera in there, you might be able to see that that's the MSI cooler that I've strapped to this, I believe it's a Sapphire card. Um, it works pretty well, however, it wasn't perfect and it was causing some clearance issues. So... I did a bit of a redneck fix with this electrical tape, and um, it's actually worked out really well. The fan spins and everything. Um, this is normally a PWM controlled fan, I believe, but the Sapphire card only had a two pin connector, but that's not a problem. I just put it on there. It still spins just fine, um, and it keeps the thing nice and cool. Both cards, the one that worked and the one that I blew up, um, have the same design where, again, I don't think you'll be able to see this very easily, but. Um, it has a rear end cooler so all the air comes out the back and is pretty much isolated entirely from the rest of the system so this actually worked out quite well the msi card had different ports on the back but thankfully there wasn't any clearance issues there so yeah this is a bit of a frankenstein card but it still works really well so i'm going to keep it in here you can also see a wi-fi card here now i took the antennas off of this so you won't be able to see them hanging at the back here um we don't really have a good Ethernet solution. We've actually got power line up here, but I don't have either long Ethernet cables or a second power line for up here. So right now, it's usually on this set up here, but um, because we were having some internet issues today, I actually moved it down here. So there's a power line plugged in back there. It's only 500 megabits a second, but it seems to be doing quite well for itself. But up until very recently, we've had to use Wi-Fi, so I've been keeping this Wi-Fi card in here. And I'm going to definitely leave it in here for now, because I don't know what the situation is around that. We might be getting more power line, I'm not too sure. The CPU is an AMD Phenom 2x4 965. 
I believe it's the black edition. I think you can overclock this. Um, it's a quad core, no no SMT, no symmetric multi-threading, but um, works quite well. I believe this is an Arctic cooler that's on top of it. Um, I got most of this for free. I got the motherboard, the CPU. I got some of the RAM for free um, and stuff like that. Over here you can see the optical drives and the hard drive enclosure. You can also see the 500 gig uh, spinning rust hard drive here, which will still be going in the computer, even though I'm going to put the SSD in it because you know we want some bulk storage in here too. Now this card is interesting. I haven't actually tried to get this to work yet. However, it is detected in OBS. This is an old school capture card. It lets you capture composite and S video sources and it also has a Firewire port on it if you wanted to capture DV. There's no point in using the Firewire on this card because the PCI bus is, I believe, only 133 megabits or megabytes or something. Um, whereas there is a Firewire port that is on the motherboard and I imagine that is PCI Express run, so that's probably faster. There's actually two. There's a mini Firewire in there as well. But I wanted to put this in here. This is, I believe, actually from Pinnacle Studio, like from the Pinnacle company. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't got it to work yet, but I just haven't had a chance to put the right cables into it and set it all up. But I will also probably be transferring this over. I'm not too sure. The slot blanks on the back of this computer case uh, are push-out ones, except the top one. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to do about that. Um, I may or may not leave this in here, but we'll see. Other than that, this is just a really old, kind of busted case. I've like used... Most of the screws in here are stripped and it's just a mess. So I really just want rid of this thing and I want it to look nicer and I want this power button to, you know, have a front on it and stuff. Front USB ports and the audio here don't actually work. Uh, I took the cables out and it was a bunch of one pin connectors. This case is very old, so it's not got the most standardized of connectors. So for the meantime, we haven't been able to use these. That's one of the reasons I wanted this monitor with a USB hub on it. But that won't be a problem anymore because of this case. So, guess what I'll do is I'll go and start getting things out of here. It's going to take me a little while, but uh, through the magic of video editing, I will be back now. Here comes the motherboard. Probably people are going to shout at me for uh, holding this by the, by the cooler, but I don't care. It's fine. It's really old. I have another one of these in storage, except... Actually, a little bit of a better board. It's an AM3 Plus board. This is just an AM3 board. It's got a semi decent chipset and six, seven, eight SATA ports. So, you know, you can put a lot of USBs in there. There's, this is a pretty well equipped board. Um, but I've got another one of these. It's pretty much exactly the same, but AM3 Plus. The only problem is the audio on that board doesn't appear to work. Um, so, I've, I've been using this one instead. Um, but if worse comes to worse, if this thing ever dies, I have another one that I can literally just drop in. That currently has a three-core Athlon on it. All that's left now is the hard drive and stuff. So, I've got everything out. You've seen most of this already. Here is the hard drive enclosure that goes in a five and a quarter inch bay. Um, and here is the most sacred item, the hard drive, which has pretty valuable data on it. This is backed up to the server downstairs, but I really don't want to have to reinstall it and set it up because this thing has to be working tomorrow. So now all that's left to do is to put it in this thing, which I can't pick up with one hand, so let's not do that. Grab the screwdriver. And we're gonna take out this one, my camera hand here. And we're gonna take out these thumb screws, which I put on way too tight and now I can't get off. We are not going to do this with the camera rolling. Every time I try to film something with the camera rolling when I'm actually working on this thing, it never works. I don't have my tripod here, it's a dad's as usual. So, I will be back. Cool. Now then, in here is, this is really nicely designed. I actually really like this. We've got some nice venting here for the power supply. Uh, the power supply sits on the bottom, which I prefer quite a bit. And you can see there's quite a big gap on the bottom here. And there's even a dust filter for the power supply under there. So, yeah, that's really nice. In here, which is not how it normally is, is the bag of goodies. And you can see we've got a lot of screws, some cable ties. So I can, I can use all new mounting hardware for this. And there's that little piezo beeper thing in there, um, which I'm going to be connecting. Just to see if it works. It's kind of cool. 
Um, this case does allow for one five and a quarter inch bay, as I said, so we'll be putting that hard drive thing in there. Um, it's got a very nice big back plate for the CPU cooler, which is nice, and this fan that comes included also supports both three pin. I'm a bit disappointed about that. I wish it was four pin, but whatever. And Molex power. I'm going to be using the three pin, of course. There is a lot of cable management space in the back. I don't know if I'll be able to get these thumb screws off. No, I can't. Um, but yeah, and the SSD actually fits in a panel. Uh, this screw here is what screws that panel in. Um, it actually fits in there, and that's quite cool. There's also space for SSDs here, so you can actually put one, two there. I think. I don't know what the clearance is like, and then put one here, and then. I will show you this when I get the other side panel off, but um, the hard drive bays also have both three and a half and two and a half inch mounts on them, and they're nice toolless. I really like this. For the money, I paid £34 for this, I think. Um, you get a really nice... Oh, God. I'm not going to knock those screws out. That's not a good idea. Um, you get a really nice case for the money, and like I said, you've got dust filter on the top. You can put two 120 mil fans on the top. This is magnetically held on. Um, yeah, I really like this. If anybody wants a case, go have a look at some CIT cases because they are, or SIT, however you pronounce it, because they are really, really nice for the money, I think. Um, they have their flaws, of course, but yeah, for the most part, I really like this. Even the cards, while they're not necessarily toolless, you can take these thumb screws out here, which thankfully I actually didn't screw to within an inch of their life. There you go. Well, if you don't knock it on the floor, <coughs> that bit comes off and you can see that the slot blank that came in here is screwed in. Uh, it's probably best to screw these in, but you don't have to. I'm definitely going to, just because I did on Ollie's computer and it just made a lot more sense. But it's a nice sort of design here. Uh, it's kind of how my HP works. So yeah, let's get the other side panel off and let's start putting some stuff in here. Forgot the I.O. shield, you don't want to do that, you'll get the whole system built and then you'll have to take it all apart again. Let's put this in. Got quite a few of the components installed, we've got the motherboard installed, we've got the hard drive caddy installed, we've got the graphics card installed, we've got the Wi-Fi card installed. I decided not to put that capture card back in here. If I want to use it, I'll put it in another one of my computers, but... Um, I really don't want to break off more of these slot blanks than I need to because it's just going to waste metal and it's, it's, and I'm going to have to go find mine and mine are silver so they're not really going to fit in with the theme. I got the little piezo beeper connected there. Uh, I got all the front panel connectors connected. I don't know if they're in right but we'll see. Um, we've got USB 2 hooked up here. We've got audio hooked up up here. This fan that came with the case is also connected. I've just realized that I probably have to power this fan as well if I want the lights to work using that Molex. So that Molex is actually down there in the power supply area. So I will do that if I need to. Um, not that it's a big deal if the lights work. Like I've connected a SATA cable to this thing. And if we flip this around, you'll see I've also put the hard drive in. Um, the SSD, I believe... I'm 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 torn as to where to put it. I think I will put it here because although then again there's a lot more cables there. Yeah, I think I'll put it over here because it's more out of the way. It can generate heat more easily here. Um and I've got quite long cables, so trying to bunch them all up here because the SATA connector is literally just right there through that hole. So there's probably not much point. Um or I could also put it in one of these quick release brackets. These are really nice by the way. Um, obviously they don't hold these things necessarily as sturdily as a hard drive, but I think they do a pretty good job, you can see, there's no problem. Um, get this back in with one hand, there we go. There's two drives here, um, I could put some other drives in here, I've got loads of two and a half inch drives, I could put one on here, if I've, I've even got some three and a half inch, but there's really no point. Um, 500 gigs is way, way more than we'll ever use. We'll probably never fill up the 180 gig SSD on this thing. Um, and of course, the big missing component is I haven't put the power supply in. You can see the Molex for the fan there. I haven't put the power supply in yet, so that's going to be a big mess of cables, but thankfully this power supply shroud area will hopefully hide most of those. 
So yeah, we're getting there. Got pretty much everything installed, all these things that were still here, got all the power cables ran, the different parts of the computer, the power supply is obviously installed. If we tip it upright and spin it around, take this panel off, you'll be able to see that there is quite a lot of cable mess back here, but that's exactly what the space is for. Down there is the hard drive. The SSD sitting here really nicely um, and everything should be working so I'm going to put this side panel on I'm not actually going to screw it in yet in case I need to change something quickly oh and I should mention I've also used one of these USB 3 to USB 2 adapters because I did manage to find them so all three USB ports should be functional on the front even if the USB 3 port won't be running at maximum speed um, yeah, so, if we can get this on one-handed, it doesn't look like it, wait, wait, I'm sure this is not exactly what you came to watch, there we go, there we go, so that's on, turn this around again, without moving the filter on top of it, never do this one-handed, you will break something, do not do what I do, then we're going to reach over here, Grab this, spin it around, put it on. There we go, it's on. And I'm going to plug it in, see what it does. Went and plugged in a power cable. I plugged in the hub for the monitor because that's where the keyboard and mouse are connected. Plugged in the video, plugged in the sound. I should probably turn this amp on. Um, this is very loud when it gets going. No, I didn't press it properly. Yeah, this is a loud fan in this. I want to replace it, but I haven't been able to yet. Oh god, the world is exploding. It wasn't in all the way. There we go. And we need to turn the TV on. Because that's the monitor I plugged in, I believe. This takes way too long. Yeah. Apparently, oh, there we go. Yeah. And let's flick the power supply on and test it out. And I didn't hook the power button up right. For God's sake. <laughs> Wait, is it. Was it on? No. What the hell have I done? Damn it! Yep, there we go. This is already way, way quieter than the previous computer. Do we get a Gigabyte logo? We do! Apparently this screen looks all retro 1950s, but obviously I can't see it so who knows. And it's probably going to boot. I hope it boots. I hope it doesn't try to boot off the SSD and fail miserably. Press F1 here, is that going to fix my problem? Yes. Uh, apparently Windows was shut down unexpectedly. I don't believe that. Oh god, don't knock over the thing of screws. Uh, this is Windows 7, so that's good. Okay. There's the login screen. I've noticed that Windows loves to make that um, startup sound stutter for some reason. Oh, I didn't plug the little squeaker can in. Well, I'll have to do that, but I want to see if this works first. I could probably plug it in while it's on, but I'm not going to. Uh, waiting for NVDA to load. I need to put this keyboard in a place where I can reach it. Ah, and not knock that over. It will load eventually. I know for a fact it will. It just takes forever. There we go. Okay, log into me.
This is exactly why I need to install the operating system on a spinning hard drive because it's really slow. There we go. I mean, it, it's, it's all right, it's usable, but there's, there's some crazy stuff happening. Uh, yeah, it's 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 very old style computer. I don't want Microsoft Teams. I don't even have a Microsoft Teams account. Go away. Thank you. Well, it seems to be working. So that's a very very good sign. Let's um, grab a memory stick and see if the ports work. I'll grab some headphones and stuff and see if they work. Got a memory stick. Let's plug it in a USB two port and watch it explode. I really hope it doesn't. It's not any important thing. It might not even be formatted. That's a very good sign. Okay, so that port works. No, I don't. I have way too many memory sticks. No, go away. Right. Oh, yay! This is the memory stick with a broken case on it. Look, it's just crumbled. Oh, well, who cares? Touching this is probably not a good idea. It's probably fine. Whatever. What does this port do? It also works. Now the big one, the USB 3 port. If something bad's gonna happen, it's gonna happen here. Nope, it also works. Awesome, so those work. Um, I got any headphones nearby. Plug this cable into the headphone jack. Which one is that? I think that's the right hand one. No, don't put your don't put your headphones into a USB port. No, that was the microphone jack. Either that or it doesn't work. Well, it works. Awesome. So everything's working. You can even see the light on the fan is working, and I didn't plug that Molex in, so it turns out you don't need to do that. It'll get power from the motherboard. Um, yeah, this is working. You can feel air coming through this vent. I take off this dust cover. Yeah, I can definitely feel that. So, I think all the fans are running. Uh, if I just turn this thing off to get a better idea of the sound. It's really not that bad. I didn't show you the sound of the last one, but it was pretty bad. It had more fans in it, and those fans were smaller. So, and at least one of them wasn't even controlled by the motherboard. It was a really old style Molex one. So, I think this will be a lot better as my bench computer and the computer that my mother is using right now. Once this shuts off, I will hook all of the cables and all of the devices and peripherals back up and we will try it again just to make sure that the triple display is still working. Windows 7 is so much better than Windows 10. It just... Who needs a UWP app? Oh god, go away. Who needs a... Ugh, a UWP app just for a sound recorder. Just keep this one. What was the point in spending a load of time on research and development re-implementing a sound recorder? Oh god, this is... something to behold. So it's been a few days, and... I've installed Windows 10 on this thing, everything is up and running. In here I just installed the piezo beeper as well. Um, got everything set up, we've actually used this computer a few times now for actual work to get actual things done. My chair is really squeaky. And we're going to see it boot up here. Um, I'm only going to give you a brief demonstration because you've all seen Windows 10 before and it's pretty self-explanatory. It is so much faster now than it ever was. With, see, look at how fast that booted up um, compared to when it was on a hard drive. I actually still have that hard drive in there, but it's been disconnected because I really didn't want to have to deal with boot priority issues. I've also run Linux on this system. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to turn on the amplifier so I can hear what I'm doing. I've also run Ubuntu 2004 on this computer, and it has been a fantastic experience. If you are part of the Linux crowd that watches this, go try out Ubuntu 2004. It is astonishingly fast. Considering it's GNOME, it's ridiculously fast. Um, and I really like it. And here comes the desktop. And that was pretty fast. NVIDIA is going to start up not too long from now. Uh, it's already loading. 
You can hear I'm using the NV Speech Player. If I go into Synthesizer Settings here, you can see NV Speech Player. I really like this. I really like Clat Synthesis. Um, it's not the most human sounding thing, but compared to eSpeak NG, it's a heck of a lot better. And I'm thinking about trying to port this to Linux. It is a C++ application um, with a bit of Python for the NVDA integration. So I might be able to do that. I'm going to look into that. No, no guarantees yet. But if I could do that and write a speech dispatcher module for it, Orca would have so much of a better voice. Yeah. Let's go shut this thing down. I thank you all for watching. Uh, this has been quite a fun video to make. I haven't had the chance to make videos in quite a while. Uh, it's been quite difficult to find the time. Sixth Form is very busy, as I said in my last video. Um, and now with this pandemic, I have at least a little bit more time. So I'm hoping to do that a bit more. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. And I'll see you next time. Peace.